Hey dude, this is me at 68, and I'm talking to myself at 17. I was just about to turn 18, so it's almost exactly 50, 50, five, zero years ago. In a couple of months, I'll be 69 years old. I just wanted to talk to you. It's been a long time since we, since we caught up. You know, I, I walk, I walk past you a few times a day, hanging up there in the, in the hallway, and we never, really had time to talk. Like I said, it's been a long time. This picture, you were. This was in the summer of 1969. Well, it was about May, actually, I guess, just before I graduated from, from high school. So, I mean, you're a nice looking dude, you know. Well, this is how it's going to be one day. That's how you're going to age. I'm glad that you did age because so many of so many of uh, my classmates aren't even around anymore. I love that hair, and I dressed up like like you. You remember a trip when you graduated, and and the assistant principal said. Trip, you've got to cut your hair for graduation. I don't remember if this was after or before the haircut, but that was just before graduation in, in June of 69. You had that beetle haircut thing, or most everybody your age, and I still have a little bit of it going on. So you were getting ready to graduate and, and go to college. You didn't want to go to college. You enjoyed the farm and, and playing in a band and being there with mom and dad and, and your brother and your little dog. The little, your little dogs. Pat, yeah, that was her name. The little beagle. And then you went to college, and you didn't do very well. The first, the first quarter, we were on the quarters then. You basically, practically almost flunked out. You didn't care about being there, because you knew that you wanted to be in a band, or you wanted to work in, in television production or, or direction, something like that. And the second quarter, you made the dean's list. So, here's a a bit of instruction to all young people. You can do just about anything that you want to. At least at your age. At his age. And there was the professor who told you, Tripp, you are not college material and you will never graduate. She was my English professor. She looked like a witch, but I loved her class. I just didn't care much about studying. But then I graduated not just with a, a bachelor's in European history with a minor in business. I went on to get an MBA in accounting and I maintained. I graduated in the top 6% of my class for my BA and I did just as well with my MBA. I don't think they gave you a a class ranking, I, I don't remember. So, you wanted to go to Atlanta to a, a radio DJ school because you DJed some right after this picture was made in the summer of 69. And you went to Atlanta to get your first class engineer's radio permit. But you didn't like that. No. And you lived in a little... A little old boarding house right there on Peachtree Street. There's nothing there but big condos and, 
in chic apartments now wouldn't recognize the place. But at that age, everything was lovely. It was all beautiful for you. Every day when you're young, you wake up and it just there's just a freshness and a liveliness to it. And you miss that when one day when you get old, which I'm not old yet. But there are a lot of people who are. And people much younger than me who are already aged. But every day was just beautiful. It had a you could see the flowers growing and everything just seemed brighter and the days seemed sun sunny. And you were happy there at the farm, really. It was just a great life. And playing in a band on the weekends and Mama fixed all those great meals and Dad basically ran the farm. Your brother worked on it too. Your brother worked on the farm more than you did. Yeah. And he stayed longer than you did too. So, you had your little car back then. I think it was a Ford Galaxy 500. It was the same one that, uh, that uh, Sheriff Andy and Barney drove in the Andy Griffith show. The same model and everything. So, your grandfather was still alive. You didn't know it, but he passed away three years after this photo was made. He had a little room that was that was uh, next to yours. And he mostly kept to himself. He retired from the railroad. He was just a fine, honorable man. And you got some habits from him. The love of travel, uh, his National Geographics, U.S. News and World Report. That was what he read. And I subscribed to it later until they quit publishing the magazine. And then it was just online, and it still is. Uh, anyhow, your brother went on to get married to just after you did. And he had two children, and he worked for the state. So he was taken care of okay. In fact, he retired for five years while I was still working. And then he went back to work with, a, with a, a private contractor at the same place where he was working, the same, the same laboratory. And he's still working to this day. It's been about three years since he went back. I kind of envy him now. You were small and skinny back then. Well, let me tell you, you didn't get much bigger. Mama said there'd be a growth spurt one day, and, well, it just never happened for you, buddy. In fact, um, you were kind of bullied a little bit in, in grammar school. You moved from, from Miami, Florida, up to Georgia because your dad wanted to farm. They wanted to get out of the city in 1958. And back then, if you were bullied, you didn't really go crying to the teacher or anything. There was no emphasis on it. It was just part of growing up. And you were bullied a bit. Yeah. In grammar school. But then, on February the 7th or 8th, 1964, the 8th, I think, it'd be on a Sunday, you saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show, and music became your escape. It became your outlet. You should have drunk more milk. You should have been healthier. Doggone it. If you'd have just taken better care of yourself back then, then we wouldn't be in this fix, maybe. We might have been a little bit bigger, you know. And it's not just us standing up to bullies. You know, you just kind of just sucked it up back then. You know, you did get in one fight. This uh, big, tall boy challenged you to a fight. We're not going to give you his name. You know who he is, who he was. And you went out there and you boxed him. And he obviously had experience. But you went out there and 
in the gymnasium, you got your gloves and you boxed him. It was not a, a rocky moment. He beat you. But you stood up to him. And you laid into him. I don't think he did so well in life. Last I heard 20 or 30 years ago. What else can I say about this? Yeah, well, I said I was never going to get married or have children. But you did have children later. You got married at nearly 40 years old. And you and your wife conceived within one month. Your daughter was born 10 months after you got married. You just were con too worried about the world and you didn't want to bring children into it back then, you know. But you didn't want to have more children than you could take care of and that you could really pay attention to. And it was later in life when you and your wife got married. She was 35. And it was not easy. She was from... Let me tell you, you never imagined at your age that you'd be married to somebody from, from another continent, another country. A very well-educated uh, 35 young lady. And y'all had a bunch of arguments, you know. Oh, your daughter probably might remember some of them. But they mostly revolved around... Uh, it was uh, about culture and language. And you still can't understand her half the time, it seems like. But um, she was a, a dentist in her home country. But then when she came here, uh, they changed the laws. And she was going to go to school in Florida and go back and get her dental degree, a special school for foreign dentists, or program. But it was just, uh, she didn't go back. But she wanted to keep working, so she went back to school and she became a, a dental hygienist. And she was taking, taking care of, your, of your, your, the baby. She didn't have any help. She didn't live next door down the road from, from mom and daddy. Her mother and father were across the ocean and my parents are already older. We couldn't just drop off the, the little girl at uh, grandma and grandpa's and have her looked after during the day. No, we did it all. So I just want you to know that you did really good when you finally got married. You picked a good lady and you had a very, a very good daughter. She went on into nursing with an advanced degree. You can be very proud of her. Okay. What else can we talk about? Yeah, well, anyway, you you had a, a good work life. You did some different things, but also your, your main, besides farming and playing in, in rock bands for, you know, weekends most of your life, and you played uh, full-time for a couple of years, and club while you were getting your MBA, but your real job, Mama said, Trip, uh, the guitar is a nice hobby, but you'll never make a living from it. Well, as it turned out, you could have made a living from it, but it was a, it's a hard life. People glamorize it, playing in a band, you know, it's a, a it's a tough life. So, uh, gee, I hope I don't start wandering around. What was I talking about? Where was I going with that? You, uh, oh yeah, you were a financial analyst with the U.S. government. You did that for 35 years. And then in November of 2015, you were in a car crash and you nearly died. A big stupid truck, a big stupid man wasn't paying attention. He ran into you almost from the front of the side, the driver's side. I won't talk about that much now. 
but you were almost paralyzed for for several weeks. It hurt. You're, you had a, a, a cracked sternum. I didn't even know I had a sternum. But uh, it hurt to breathe. You couldn't take a deep breath. You really suffered from that, my boy. But you decided to go ahead and retire at the end of the year after that. And so you did. December 31st of 2015. That was an awful road. It was one of the worst roads in, in the state. And you figured that that was really your second car wreck. Back in the mid-80s, you were playing in a band, playing weekends, and you came back from somewhere. Like you came back a long way, and the, and the band dropped you off in some other town. You were driving home, and then you turned your car over exactly upside down. You fell asleep because you had a project at work. You were staying up late by that. You were working on the farm, and then you played. I digress. Anyway, you drove back, and it was not a terrible wreck. It just turned upside down in the car. You were upside down. So, you had a bad bump on your head, but you were okay. So you survived that. Just wanted to let you know. Okay? So, no doubt Mom and Dad worried about you. They worried about you back then and they they always worried growing up on the farm you, you had to work hard and it was dangerous some of the work was dangerous really dangerous you only got hurt a couple times you know stung up by bees uh, nearly bit by a rattlesnake but you uh, you survived all that and dad expected you to work out there with everybody else and there was a lot of a lot of bad people that you worked with. But you got out there and 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 you worked really hard. You worked like a dog. You got dirty, filthy, and nasty. Tobacco growing tobacco was the worst thing. What you liked best probably was just riding the riding the tractor little teeny tractor, not those real big tractors that people buy now. So, riding up and down in the fields and you had all that time just to daydream. Okay. So, I think you, they, they worried about you when you went to Europe twice when you were 21 and then when you were about 29. So, you had many magical adventures in your life, and Europe was just the fantastic, one of the most fantastic. You just, you were backpacking. You didn't stay in fancy motels. You didn't even hardly stay in youth hostels. People would invite you home. You loved Europe, and you really would have liked to have lived there. But you knew you would miss the farm and, and mom and dad and everything else. You got homesick. Let's see. I wish you'd spent more, uh, been more serious about investing in school. You know, you had a couple of false starts, and, and and mom and dad said, "Well, if you don't, if you don't go straight through school, you'll never finish, never finish college." But you did stay out for a year or so. You you had some other excellent adventures, and, and uh, not enough time to talk about those now. But you did go back to college. Like I said earlier, you did really great. You showed them. So another lesson to young people, you know it's not too late. And if you want to drop out of school for a year or so, then I'll do that and pursue your dream. And if your dream doesn't work out, don't do it forever. I had a lot of friends who, who weren't as lucky and they built their life around playing in a band or being a, you know, artist or whatever, actor, actress. And they, they ended up, it was kind of sad.
for most of them. So, okay, pursue your dream. You know, you were kind of cheap back then, kind of stingy. But I wish you had, in, had learned more about investing, but you didn't care about money, except trying to avoid spending it. You know, it would have helped me out a lot if you had, if you had uh, invested in stocks from when you were young. I know there have been ups and downs with it all. But you really should have done that more. But yeah, you dropped out of work to go to Europe and don't really regret that. There's more to life than just punching a time card for, for 30 years or 40 years. You did a lot of stupid things. In spite of all the stupid things you did, you know, you were still okay. I don't have time to talk to you about all the, the stupid things that you did that you were going to go on and do and you never thought about it back then that you did. Uh, the Vietnam War. You didn't get drafted. You were in the Vietnam, the draft lottery. So in Ju a year later after this, in July of 70, they had the draft lottery for everybody that was born in 1951. And you came up to number 229. You know, you were really up there, so you didn't have to worry about being drafted. And you didn't have to worry anyhow because you would have had an agricultural deferment, I think. And you did have a student deferment. So you didn't have to go anywhere. The bass player in your band, his his number was, I think it was like eight or something. But they only got as far as calling up to 100 and, 125 in the lottery that year. So you, you were okay after that. But you were right about the Vietnam War. You know, we. We learned nothing from it. And then since then, we've engaged in more wars that really went nowhere. They were just a huge loss of, of, of lives and, and treasure. We were always well-intentioned. I think we were always well-intentioned. Now, we wanted to see democ democracy thrive. But, you know, one nation, we were just too arrogant. We thought we could do everything. And even recently, we still did. Politics, the first president you voted for was George McGovern. Oh, you were so idealistic, weren't you? You still are a little bit, but you had kind of that hippie, the hippie thing going on, you know. Remember those pictures of you with the, with the bell bottoms and the, and the, uh, the tie-dyed t-shirt? You had some moccasins and those little wiring glasses like John Lennon wore. I think you were kind of a caricature. You know, you're young and you're, it's okay if you do, if you dress funny. You know. But the first president you voted for was George McGovern, and he wanted to end the Vietnam War. And all, a lot of the young people voted for him. And I bet it was just a very small number. He was crushed by Richard Nixon in the 72 election, the first one you could vote for, you know, but then, and even today we have a, we've had a, a, a candidate for president that, that a lot of the young people admire and follow, but you know, when McGovern lost, you didn't whine about it and be a baby, you just sucked it up and, and then, Richard Nixon won in 68, 69, and you tried to get behind him and just go on with your life. And actually, later on, Richard Nixon proved to be a crook, and he was kicked out, kicked out of the presidency. So, McGovern might have been, he would have been the best choice. You were right about that. Oh. But anyhow, okay, we got to talk about girls. 
you always feel for a pretty face and a, and a slim body. And they didn't have to be beautiful, really. They just had to have a certain character to them. I don't know. You were just really weak in that way. You had your heart broken a few times. And you probably deserved it. But then you broke a few hearts, too. I suppose. And you always had this kind of a chip on your shoulder about being short. And that's one thing that... that, that uh, that you, that you never did get over, you know, being kind of short and skinny, you always felt like you had to be the best. So you were the, the lead guitar in the band, you were out in front, you were the, uh, a singer. You had to be the best in your classes in college anyway. In high school, you didn't do anything. All you cared about was being on the farm and playing in the band. But in college, you were, you were either first, second, or third in most of your classes when you were a junior and a senior. You did great. And you always felt like you had a thing about these uh, little short girls who were going or these real tall guys. Maybe those, uh, they were maybe insecure. You know, that's just what you thought. And maybe you think it now. I have a lot of friends who were, who were tall and had short girlfriends. Yeah. Anyway, that's, I'm just, I'm just telling you, you know, what you thought and how it all turned out. I'll try to wrap this up now. Uh, you know, I, I started a, a YouTube channel, YouTube. Well, it's like a, sh a video sharing platform. It started about uh, 2005. Yeah, it was. it's on the internet. Uh, the internet, uh, that's, uh, you know, it have all of, like these servers. Servers? Well, they're like computers, you know. And of course, I've got a PC, and a PC is a personal computer. Yeah, everybody had their own computer. So, uh, you know, it's, I was on Facebook and Twitter. I blogged for a while. You know, Facebook, you know, don't, don't even... It's all social media. I know you have no idea. But I, I did that for just a few months and I retired. But YouTube is the thing that I kind of kept with or we'll see how it goes nobody much cares about you when you get older I film everything on my iPhone iPhone is like a it's like a little phone it's like that that you carry uh, no it's not like a land yeah well I still have a landline but it doesn't have the dials that we had I can't it's too much to talk about a few other things here, you know, we had the, the moon landing was uh, right after you graduated. We really put a man on the moon, yeah. Back then the Dow was under, under a thousand, maybe like 900 or so. It was like a little recession back then in 69, 70. Uh, unemployment got up there kind of high. Unemployment now is 3.5%. And uh, the Dow was at 29,000, at least before we had this, uh, this uh, epidemic that came around. Everything was really good. In 1969, when, you know, there was, uh, there was no federal deficit at all. In fact, the year that the year that you made this photograph, there was actually a surplus of three or four billion, three or four billion dollars. The next time that happened was in, was around 19, uh, 99, 2000 or so, I think. Is that right? Or was it 1998, 99? Yeah. So, uh, 
the deficit now. We've had trillion dollar deficits for three or four years over the last 10 years. And the federal debt is now 23, 23 trillion dollars. And now to fight this, um, this epidemic, they've, we've advanced trillions of dollars of uh, federal spending and, and the Federal Reserve guaranteeing everything. So that's how it is now. The population back then you had 207 million, just over 200 million Americans, and now it's about 330 million. Anyway, I I think that my life has turned out mostly okay in spite of all the dumb things I did. I worked really hard, and I've had many excellent adventures that you can't even imagine. So, I guess I'll say thanks for being you, and one last thing, your mother and father, our mother and father, was the, were the best people that ever lived. Everyone should have a mother and a father like that. And so many don't have, don't have a, maybe better than now. But I think my life has been a, a plus for the world. And I'll t talk to you later, dude. Oh, it's a clicker thing. I, see, I clicked this thing. I was trying to learn it. So you see, I still have a lot to learn about technology. I was crazy starting this channel. It's, you know. But I don't want to sit around on a rocking chair.